the challenges of youth O youth in the path of Islam stand tall O youth in the path of Islam stand tall with patience and prayer you shall not fall with patience and prayer you shall not fall الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله أو بلغد ماستر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم has encouraged us to recite salawat upon him صلى الله عليه وسلم in abundance and indeed our recitation of salawat على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم is a great rahma a great means of mercy and baraka for us الحمد لله رب العالمين in one of the many narrations in which Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us of the benefit that we receive if we recite salawat upon him and if we increase and recite salawat in abundance is a narration in which the beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam has advised us that the one who recites salawat 1000 times daily will not die until he sees his place in jannah subhanallah subhanallah we all would love that wouldn't we most definitely so we need to recite salawat in abundance upon rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallu ala alhabib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam welcome back honorable viewers of madani channel to another episode of the challenges of youth alhamdulillah rabbil alamin in the silsila we discuss various challenges that youth face in their lives In, and many others do face it as well however youth do need islamic guidance all of us need islamic guidance but youth do not often have the wealth of experience and thus alhamdulillah allah blessed us that we have a way of making it simple that alhamdulillah islam has given us guidance in every walk of life so we discuss islamic guidance and that gives us so much more guidance and alhamdulillah stands in place of that experience that our elders already have alhamdulillah islam guides the youth as well. Well, so today to inshallah we're going to discuss one of the challenges that youth face that they find something in front of them that is often so attractive to them and they need to find ways to stay away from that evil so we're going to discuss a certain evil today that the youth are often in contact with or coming to contact with it at some point in life and they need to stay away from that trick of shaitan so we're going to identify the trick of shaitan and we're going to learn how we can stay away from the trick of shaitan and what those what shaitan uses is in order to trap us in this trick of his please stay tuned and inshallah we're going to dive into this topic just after we listen to this beautiful kalam in praise of the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam stay with us and enjoy this kalam inshallah ta'ala sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam mustafa jaan rahmat شمع بزم ہدایت صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وسلم کا فرمان عالیشان ہے کہ جو کوئی شخص مجھ پر ایک بار درود پاک پڑھے اللہ عز ودل اس پر اپنی دس رحمت نازل فرماتا ہے اس کے دس گناہوں کو مٹاتا ہے اور اس کے دس درجات کو بلند فرماتا ہے آج جو کلام آپ سننے جا رہے ہیں اس میں آپ کو بار بار درود پاک پڑھنے کا موقع ملے گا آئیے نعت رسول مقبول بھی سنیے اور درود پاک کے ورد میں شامل ہو جائیے سچی بات سکھاتے یہ ہے سیدھی راہ دکھاتے یہ ہے جلتی جانے بجھاتے ہیں جلتی جانے بجھاتے ہنساتے یہ ہیں صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ 
قصرِ دنا تک کس کی رسائی قصرِ دنا تک کس کی رسائی جاتے یہ ہیں آتے یہ ہیں صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم فیض جلیل خلیل سے پوچھو فیض جلیل خلیل سے پوچھو آگ میں باغ کھلاتے یہ ہیں صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کوثر ساری کسرت پاتے یہ ہیں صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم رب ہے معتی یہ ہے قاسم رب ہے معتی یہ ہے قاسم رزق اس کا ہے کھلاتے یہ ہے صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اپنی بنی ہم آپ بگاڑے اپنی بنی ہم آپ بگاڑے کون بنائے بناتے یہ ہیں صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم لاکھوں بلائے کروڑوں دشمن لاکھوں بلائے کروڑوں دشمن کون بچائے بچاتے یہ ہیں صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم مرکد میں بندوں کو تھپک کر مرکد میں بندوں کو تھپک کر میٹھی نیند سلاتے یہ ہیں صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ 
باپ جہاں بیٹے سے بھاگے باپ جہاں بیٹے سے بھاگے لطف وہاں فرماتے یہ ہے صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ما جب اکلوتے کو چھوڑے ما جب اکلوتے کو چھوڑے آ آ کہہ کے بلاتے یہ ہے صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ٹھنڈا ٹھنڈا میٹھا میٹھا ٹھنڈا ٹھنڈا میٹھا میٹھا پیتے ہم ہیں پلاتے یہ ہے صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سلم سلم کی ڈھا رس سے سلم سلم کی ڈھا رس سے پل پر ہم کو چلاتے یہ ہے صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کہہ دو رضا سے خوش ہو خوش رہ کہہ دو رضا سے خوش ہو خوش رہ مجدہ رضا کا سناتے یہ ہے صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم الحمدللہ رب العالمین there was a beautiful kalam in praise of the beloved صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم and I'm hopeful that you've enjoyed it that it's rejuvenated your spirits that it's refreshed your iman that your love for رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم is fresh and feels as if it has increased انشاءاللہ تعالی الحمدللہ رب العالمین now as we've promised as well we were going to discuss a topic which is a trick of shaitan that shaitan tries to trap people in especially the youth and many others as well and that trick of shaitan this haram act that we need to stay away from that we're going to discuss today is the act and the sin of gambling yes you heard right gambling gambling is is such a sin that is so widespread and it's so common and it's happening all around us Allahu Akbar may Allah Ta'ala protect us and save us and you may just think that gambling is only taking place in certain places however after today's episode inshallah you're going to recognize this trick of shaitan that is taking place so vastly across the board in so many places that many of us are also exposed to it and those who are saved it is only because Allah has saved them and those who fall prey to it they have fallen prey to the trick of shaitan 
this gambling. Firstly, how do we know that it is a sin? How is it that we recognize that gambling is wrong, that it's not allowed, and how is it that we are going to recognize it? We need to turn the, to the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to kitabullah, in which Allah azza wa jal guides us. Allah tells us what it is that we must do and what it is that we must not do, what is it, it is that is good for us and what it is that is bad for us. And Allah azza wa jal says in the Holy Quran, Yes, alunaka anil khamri wal maysira, that, O oh, beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are asking you regarding wine and regarding gambling because people were asking Huzur Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding wine and the Islamic ruling on it and regarding gambling and the Islamic ruling on it and they were asking various questions and thus Allah Azza wa Jal addressed it and Allah Azza wa Jal says to his beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ Let's say, O beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam there is a great sin in both of these and there is also some worldly benefit for the people. But Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِن نَفْعِهِمَا Allah Azza wa Jal says, but their sin is greater than their benefit. And so we understand that there could be some sort of benefit that someone may see in gambling. However, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us that it is a sin. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells us that the sin in this gambling is greater than any benefit that someone may assume that they could receive through this gambling. And thus, when Allah Azza wa Jal has identified it for us as a sin, then we must accept it as a sin and we must stay away from that. And when Allah Azza wa Jal has told us that their sin is greater than their benefit, then please don't try to find ways of benefit and try to think that we may know better. La hawla wa la illa billah. We do not know. Allah Azza wa Jal knows. Whatever benefit you see in it is very minute benefit. The sin in it is far greater than any benefit that you may assume or you may think or you may imagine you could gain. May Allah Ta'ala protect us from this grave sin of gambling, I mean. Now when we know gambling is such a sin, now what comes to mind that what is gambling? Because I, I don't want to fall into that sin that Allah Azza wa Jalla said, he said it's such a big sin, such a great sin, such a grave sin. I don't want to fall into it, but I need to know what it is so that I can stay away from it. So the definition of gambling, what is gambling? Gambling is any such game in which there is a condition that the winner will gain something from the loser. Again, the definition gambling is any such game in which there is a condition that the winner will gain something from the loser. Ah, oh, now when you've heard that definition, apply that definition and realize, recognize how many different ways and forms of gambling there are throughout our lives. That in so many walks of life, in so many things that we do, gambling is just, it's just all over. It's just such a grave sin which is placed in front of us at so many points, at so many various times. So this is that sin that has become so widespread. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. Yes, this is the one major form of gambling, main or very common form of gambling, that which we consider to be gambling, and that is going to places of gambling, such as casinos. So you know that casinos are where gambling takes place, at those at casinos with those big machines and so on, and how attractive shaitan tries to make it. How attractive it is that the, the casinos you will find have so much of bright lighting, attractive lighting, attractive uh, designs, colorful designs, so much of money is spent to attract the people. And then we have this issue that the youth have, that many a times youth mention that I'm not going to gamble. We're just going with some friends, we're not going to gamble. There's just a very nice lounge there at the casino as well. Ah, it's a very comfortable lounge, there's free internet, it's very fast internet, there's free coffee maybe that I'm going to get there. I'm just going to chill out, I'm just going to relax for a little while. We're going to sit with a few friends, we're going to have some coffee, we're going to have a few discussions and just pass our time, enjoy ourselves like that. But we're not going to gamble. Ikhwani, my honorable viewers of Madani channel, just think for a moment. Now I want to ask you a very serious question. Do we know when we are going to die? Do we know when we are going to die? I don't know when I'm going to die. You don't know when you are going to die. We know we're going to die, but we don't know when we're going to die. Now, when we do not know when we are going to die, what happens if 
we enter that casino and go to that lounge area and that gambling is taking place all around us. And at that point, at that time we die. Is that the place, the environment that we want to breathe our last breath? No, we don't want to breathe our last breath in that kind of environment. We don't want to, when that molecule mode takes our life, takes our life in that kind of environment. No, we don't want that. So when you don't want that you die in that environment and you don't know when you are going to die, then why enter that environment? Then again, then again, Rasulullah has advised us that stay away from places or at which people are going to place tuhma upon you. People are going to place allegations upon you. People are going to place accusations upon you. Now, if you're going to enter a, a casino, what are people going to think? Yes, we will advise people that think good of believers, that if you see a Muslim entering that kind of place, please try to think of some other excuse. But that is one advice given to them. However, the vast majority are going to look at you and think, ah, he's also a gambler. Ah, she's also a gambler. Ah, they're also going to gamble. They're going to commit this major sin. Just think if a Muslim is going to enter a bar, what, is, what are people going to think? They're going to think that this Muslim is going, this is an alcoholic, this is a sharabi, this is a person who drinks alcohol. May Allah Ta'ala protect us. So don't place yourself in such a situation where people are going to label you like that. People are going to label you that you are an alcoholic or that you are a gambler. Thus, it is better, very much better, to stay away from places like that. Please, try not to enter places like that. Try not to go to places like that. However, it's become so common that nowadays people don't have to go to those places for that to take place as well. It is so unfortunate, Allahu Akbar, that now on our, our mobile devices, on our computers, a person could just gamble from there. That whilst watching something on a phone, whilst watching something on a laptop, well, start watching something on a TV screen, there are the options of gambling. That people may be watching some game of sport and then there is some sort of betting that is taking place. And from the comfort of their homes, from, from their own couches, they can just pick up their phones and bet on a certain team. This too is gambling. This too is haram. How, how many games there are that even many youth are playing as well, in which everybody has to invest a certain amount of money and the winner will end up winning that money. The one who loses the game, they don't win anything, they lose that money instead. This too is a different form of gambling, but it's gambling nonetheless. It's, it's gone so far. Gambling has gone so far that in certain functions nowadays, there is winning an Umrah ticket, but in which way that is done? That People invest or everybody buys a ticket for a certain amount, for a certain amount of money. That's so much of money, you buy your ticket and all that money gets put together. And when that money gets put together, the one who wins that draw, that money that is put together from everyone else is then used to buy that Umrah ticket. May Allah save us. This is gambling. How are we going to, we think we are going to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through gambling? So this sort of thing is not allowed. Yes, if somebody sponsored it from their side and said, yes, I am giving from my own wealth, I'm giving an Umrah ticket and whoever wins this, they wins, then I'm going to gift them an Umrah ticket. MashaAllah, no problem. But for everybody to put money like that and a game to be taking place and then the winner is going to win the ticket and everyone else loses their money in that. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. This is just another form of gambling. Shaitan is playing with people like this. People win holidays like this. People win different uh, prizes like this. This is gambling. And most definitely, this is not good. This is one of the ways that Shaitan is using to trick people into coming into gambling. And they are assuming that they are doing a good thing. They are assuming that we are going to go for Umrah through this. They are assuming that I will win this money. I will win this money and I will do this good deed and I will do that good deed. What good deed are we going to do with, with the haram money? We think that's going to bring us any closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone has that intention that if I win, then I'll invest, I'll put so much into the masjid, I'll put so much into madrasa, I'll put so much into orphanages. What goodness is it going to bring you? Even that haram wealth has to be returned to its rightful owners. And if you want it from a thousand people, then you have a thousand people to go and find and give back each one of them their wealth. And if you cannot find them, if it's not possible to find them, what a task it is. If it's not possible to find them, then what, is, what are you to do? You have to give that in sadaqah without the intention of gaining any thawab. Because there is no thawab in that. There's no thawab in, in giving haram money. The money was not halal for us in the first place. 
So in giving that money, give the money away as if you are getting rid of wealth. You don't want it. So give it away. And don't hold any intention that I'm going to get any thawab through it. Because there is no thawab in that. There is no thawab in, in giving, in earning and in giving haram wealth. And that wealth that comes in through gambling, think, uh, am I going to buy a house? Am I going to buy a car? Am I going to keep it with my halal money? Am I going to feed my children that? Every one of these situations is going to put us in trouble. Are you going to buy a house with that? Do we think we'll get barakah in that home? Or is it most likely going to be affected by some disaster or some fire because it was, it was earned through haram? That vehicle that we are going to buy, what is it going to do for me? What barakah? There's no barakah in it. Therefore, I may just drive that vehicle and break my leg. May Allah save us. Are we going to feed our children that so that we want fire to burn in their bellies and we want to be answerable for that? May Allah Ta'ala protect us. Indeed, there is no goodness in this. There is no goodness in this. This is just a trick of shaitan that shaitan uses to draw people towards evil. To, because he has promised Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that he's going to lead us astray. And we need to ensure that shaitan does not win. We are here to please Rahman. We are here to please Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And it is important that we try to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People just have this, what, what drives people actually towards committing this? And they just think that one day I'll strike luck. One day I'll strike luck. And some people would go in, in South Africa, I know, the people go after work and they would play something called the lotto. They would put in five rands or 10 rands, a certain amount of South African currency. And all of that goes together and it builds up a large sum in millions. And then a certain person wins it. So people just think that, ah, oh, maybe that one in a million chance is going to, is going to come to me that I'm going to win it. But even my honorable viewers of Madani channel, even if you do win it, there is no barakah in it. We as believers, we want barakah. We as believers, we want barakah. And barakah is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakah can be attained by earning pure wealth, by earning wealth in ways that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we will experience the flow of barakah and peace and serenity and goodness in our lives. Rather earn the little that you can earn by halal means and stay away from the millions that you could earn through haram means. Life is very short. We are accountable for our every action. And on the day of Qiyamah, we will be accountable for every cent that we have earned and spent. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect us and grant us tawfiq to act upon that which we have learned, the goodness that we have learned, and may Allah give us tawfiq to stay away from the evils and the tricks of shaitan. Ameen bijahi khatam in nabiyyin. Please do join us again for the next episode of the Challenges of Youth. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Stay locked to Madani Channel. The Challenges of Youth O youth in the path of Islam, stand tall. O youth in the path of Islam, stand tall. With patience and prayer, you shall not fall. With patience and prayer, you shall not fall.